So hello everyone and welcome back to the third session of this afternoon, Contact with the More Than Human World. And we will see that maybe now we are going to move back a little bit towards the human world, but I hope you will understand by the end of the day why we chose the next speaker also to be part of that afternoon. So on my left hand side is Simana Alarcon, who is a sound artist and academic researcher interested in listening to in between sonic spaces and how they are manifested in dreams underground public transport and the migratory context. Simena's research focuses on creating telematic improvisations using deep listening and interfaces for relational listening. She's also a certified deep listening tutor and has taught the practice in Colombia, India, Spain, Germany, Mexico, Brazil and the UK. She is currently a tutor in the online deep listening certification program offered by the Center for Deep Listening and works independently in the section phase of the in Intimal project that involves an embodied physical virtual system for relational listening in telematic sonic performance and the telematic creation space for migrant women. And I think we are going to hear a lot about this project um, the next presentation. Her presentation's title is Sonic Migrations Telematic Music That might hold us as we walk into rituals for collective agency. So Simema, over to you. I'm really interested what you're thank going you to talk much. about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation, Anita, and, and thanks for the festival to hosting me. I'm very happy to be again in Berlin. Uh, last time I was here actually offering a deep listening workshop. Um, actually, interesting, I, I changed a bit the title. Um, uh, and I changed a bit, kind of um, remembering some discussions earlier about music and sound. I put music and then I doubted and then I said, no, w I would talk about resonances. <laughs> so the title or the subtitle is the resonances that hold us as we walk through telematic rituals. Also in my original title, I have might with some doubt. So I remove the might and I say, no. They hold us, they hold us, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so in a positive uh, look, uh, without too much doubt, because we are in, in a world of uncertainty. Um, okay, so today I will take you through my journey, um, through what I call sonic migrations. These resonances and rituals in which I have engaged myself and others since 2004, I might say, uh, in form of performances, actual performances since 2012, but before, as I will also show, I have been working in listening quite a lot. So I will use um, the accounts in my research journey, as well as some questions that I offer you as invitations to listen. Um, so I go actually with the same, the, with one question, I start with you. Um, and I would like you to invite you to listen now to this space, this wonderful space, and all the possible present sounds. You can softly close the eyes or fully close the eyes if you wish. Now I will um, invite you to go to any distant place where you want to go right now and listen there. And people in the online streaming, they could come here to listen because this is your distant place. Okay, and then you can go back to your original place where you feel your presence with your feet on the ground. And, um, and just open also softly your eyes if you have closed it. 
Um, so this is listening across time and space. Since 2008, actually, I've been practicing deep listening with Paulino Oliveros, the composer Paulino Oliveros, who I had the great pleasure to, to know and to learn from, their, from her directly. And she developed a deep listening practice um, to help us to expand the perception of sound, the sound continuum as it travels in time and space. And this involves listening to our surroundings, listening to our unconscious dreams, so we listen during 24 hours, um, and also listening to our body, the full body, uh, from different perspectives of our bodies, not necessarily about with the ears, but also be open to all the vibrations that are there. Um, for that, in deep listening, we train uh, with uh, energy movements, particularly from traditional Chinese practices such as Qigong and Tai Chi, that help us to bring this energy in the body. Um, so um, she asked me when I was more and more interested in deep listening that if I choose that I can show something to listen to. And I asked me, what, what would you like to listen to? And I say, I want to listen to my own migration. I'm from Colombia, and I've been living in the UK for 20 years, uh, with two years outside in, in Norway. Mm, but yes, I was quite interested. I, I wasn't sure what was that, if it was my voice, if it was my surroundings, if it was the perception of the place. Uh, it, it was everything. Um, so. I started to listen to what I call the in-betweenness uh, between this place or that place and my distant surroundings. Uh, through the exploration of my own voice, uh, my spoken native and second languages. Um, in migration, oops, uh, apologies. Okay, in migration, we experience a radical change in our spatial and temporally embodied multisensory experience. Not being there and not here is the feeling uh, that, that we have as if both places have to be fixed. So this uh, perception of loss and this sadness and saudade, as um, Brazilians and Portuguese said, is to do also with an, uh, our idea that things are fixed. So when we go out of our fixity, of course, we become kind of dislocated. We don't like this culture, or we don't like our culture, or this land, or the mountains, or the... So anyway, 20 years. <laughs> and probably many of you experienced this. Um, so I wanted to have to access to this in-betweenness in a way somehow healing. And, and I started uh, for my search for an embodied interface for that. So here, another question, just for you some seconds to think. What interfaces you when meeting others? Listen to the fluidity of, of that interface. I've been looking for a fluid, an embodied interface between these realities, a membrane that helped me to listen together to the pieces from stories belonging to distant times and locations, and to share it with others and create alternative territories that originally exist in my mind because of the dislocation. A membrane that separates us, but also that becomes a filter, so it's not a rigid interface because then there is no access. <laughs> um, and I, I imagine as a porous space that we can interact through. So dreams and networking technologies have helped me to navigate throughout the in the, this in-betweenness. Listening in dreams is part of the deep listening practice, um, as I mentioned before. And, it, and it's a space where we don't have boundaries. Um, it's a space where we can fly, where we have kind of a, a fluid life. 
Um, the expansion and compression of time and space contribute also to my sense of place and my feeling of presence. What I mean also by sensing place is the grounding, to know that I'm physically here. And what I mean by presence is this part of me, which is acknowledged here by the other, but also that is acknowledged and remembered across distant locations. Of course, that is, as it has mentioned before in previous talks and conversation, is bidirectional or multidirectional. Um, Expanding my sense of place and my sense of presence is also expanding my sense of agency to move with free will across such in-betweenness. Uh, Sean Gallagher explains our embodied sense of agency as actions with purpose, which he said are best described in terms of intentions rather than neurons, muscles, or regions. In human-computer interaction, a sense of agency could be understood as the experience of controlling both one's body and the external environment. Um, and it is part of um, an important measure of, of the interface design. So if, if the interface that we use is more embodied, uh, it can increase our human sense of ag agency. So, to explore that, I've been working with listening and connecting across distant locations and created interfaces for relational listening. So I want to take you before Intimal to the previous work, kind of the, um, the origin, probably more uh, um, tacit without saying this is my migration. That was my PhD and my first postdoctoral work. It was um, listening to underground transport systems and creating an interactive uh, sonic environment where we can navigate through that. So I work in ethnographic practice with commuters from three, three cities in the world. London, that was my PhD, and then Mexico and Paris as a counterpart of London. So. What, what now I think is interesting here, and this, this work was in uh, 2003 to 2009, um, is what it, me it meant for me. So I, I had a fascination with trains and with the underground. I'm in a very industrial environment, as, as many people have, and, and particularly with my migration. So I perceive it as a safe shell. It was my interface, actually, with the physical space where I was living, which was London originally. I felt in control to navigate a new space. Michel de Certeau refers to this experience of a railway as a metaphor of navigation and incarceration. So you feel in control, but you are really controlled, <laughs> controlled by the infrastructure and by the paths that you have to, to take. Um, so, with sounding on the ground, I metaphorically removed that shell from my body. But the computer screen became the interface to immerse in that underground space and to listen in between these cities, meaning cultures, spaces, languages, and human-machine interactions in the everyday life. So, I will show you a, um, a bit of the essence of sounding on the ground. intermediate spaces, doors, where you can go to any other uh, metro.
Paris didn't appear. Oh yes, here is Paris. Okay, so this was an interactive sonic environment as an installation live on the web for 11 years until 2020, where Google didn't support more the Flash environment. Um, so it's, um, it's available only in video, unfortunately, and hoping now to, to refresh the technology for that. Uh, but it's interesting also, and this is all how t we listen to technology and what is happening, what, what technology is giving access as to and what it removes. Um, so with the underground journey, actually, I suggested that symbolically every journey becomes a metaphor of people's inner life. This underground ritual, which happens in physical space and happens also with the virtual space, uh, is a sonic migration and deep listening in space that leads to heightened awareness of the self and others mediated by technology. Um, after this work, I felt the need of synchronous encounters. I wanted that, but I didn't have the technology to do that. Um, so I engaged in the making of telematic sonic performances at the same time that Pauline Oliveros asked me, what do I want to hear? So, so it was to create telematic sonic performance in the context of migration, trying to, to hear with others to that in-betweenness, different narratives and explorations. Mm, the vehicle now was the internet, not only as a host, but as a bi-directional transmitter in real time. Um, I work with exchanges of letters, uh, dreams, how cities sound, uh, the focus also was in voice because I work with people who are not necessarily uh, trained performers, just that they want to listen to their migration and they want to improvise with that. Um, yes, and these are some of the, I will say, my keywords, um, which I learn quite a lot from all of this. I am also here uh, showing articles uh, that I have written in depth of each case and uh, published. Um, so I just wanted to extract also in, in this talk key things that lead me to where I am now. And I found part of this performance, I found one part that is very interesting. And I will play and then I will tell you why. <laughs> Lucha, despierta, 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 lucha, lucha, despierta, confundida, confundida, busy, confundida, busy, respira, respira, mucha lucha, solito, confundida, respira. They were sending words from between Leicester, a city in the UK, and, and Mexico City. They were sending uh, words of what what the people are like, what they are doing in their cities. And they were repeating. They not necessarily knew their language, either Spanish or English. Um, but what was interesting is that there are repetitive words that people start to engage with. And one repetitive word uh, was respira in Spanish, which is breathe, breathe, breathe. Um, so that's significant um, 10 years after. Um, another interesting work here is um, also shows how the different technologies are telling us about, about our condition. So I use bidirectional audio streaming uh, using a uh, jack trip, tube plug, sound jack, which are technologies that uh, musicians working in telematic performance use. And these technologies are very high to control, very difficult to control, as even today. 
is, is clear. Um, and if you work with only sound and high quality, it's even more difficult. Before the lockdown, before the pandemic, we needed big institutions to hold these kind of performances. We needed big ba bandwidth. Um, now, fortunately, um, for example, a technology such as Jack Trip, where you can hear really the space of the other person in an incredible manner, um, we can do it through domestic connections in this moment, which is incredible, like thinking of that 10 years ago. Um, but we artists that work with telematics and networks, we know these fragilities of connections and the fragility uh, of us projected somehow in the technology. And that become part of my performances. Um, not only the connections, but also the technologies that we use, such as microphones, for example. So in this performance that I will play just some seconds now, in Suelo Fertil, it was between Mexico, London, and Linz. So we have a big issue connecting London with the other two cities. Eventually, that was very dramatic. And in London, uh, the connection uh, didn't happen. So the performance was acoustic. Um, but the women who have been working with me, that was with migrant women, um, they have established connections that allow them to do something improvisatory in real time. And I was not even there. I was in Mexico City. And in Mexico, so we had a telematic performance with a lens. Um, I used binaural microphones because I wanted to, to have a perception of a space, because you don't know really about the space when you transmit telematically. Um, and. Um, and also, in a space less controlled than radio, uh, studios of radio or television or a space like this. I did it really in a vulnerable way, outside, and um, the binaural microphones started to capture radio signals that we don't hear, but the transmission heard it. So that was uh, very interesting for me. Today. Hoy soy una esponja, a sponge that lives y respira bajo el agua. I breathe. Vivo en todos los mares, en todos los arrecifes y entre los corales. Y ahí me encuentra su capacidad. I absorb everything. Absorbo luz. Estoy sentada en una silla en donde solo hay una galleta. Solo estoy ahí escuchando los aviones, la señal de radio, sus voces como si me estuvieran diciendo un secreto. Okay, so, well, this just uh, as a capsule to show this, this space that is not necessarily with this sound perfection, let's say, but that even if we can control, as is, in, is the case of our migrations, the case of technology, or the case of, of, of the world, is really difficult. And, and that kind of brings this in-betweenness as a space to acknowledge and just to be there w with what is there. So eventually, um, with all these experiences, I wanted to create my system. <laughs> um, so to create a system, not necessarily an interface, but a different interface that helped me to deal with this re relationality. So I had the great opportunity to have a Marie Curie postdoctoral um, fellowship, uh, which I had uh, in the University of Oslo in the Ritmo Center to develop and learn of this, of this project. So in terms of embodied listening, I have learned with deep listening practice. But I haven't in terms of embodied interaction, where actually the body needs to move, to move something in terms of sound and to react. So this is what I was studying. And I was interrelating body movement, voice and language, oral archive, and memories of place. 
and I focus on the experience of Colombian migrant women um, in Europe, uh, specifically in three cities, Oslo, Barcelona, and London. I work uh, with nine uh, guests. I invite them uh, to participate in, in my project. Um, and also I work with an oral archive of uh, Colombian migrant women who have been forced to migrate because of the conflict. So we are dealing in the middle of all the crises of the world. We are leading with, with a long um, history of violence. So, so we are dealing at, with that <laughs> uh, healing apart from dealing with environmental um, issues too, or ecological issues, um, which are knowing that we are one of the most biodiverse countries in, in the world too. So, so it's, it's all kind of together. So I invite these nine women to have a process of deep listening, listening in dreams, listening to place and environment, and listening to their, the body, and as, as they started to be engaged in this project, um, I propose that all these experiences um, can build their migratory journey, which I propose that goes through four spheres of migratory memory. The memory of the body, stories of the body, the social body, um, which is the relationship with others, uh, the native place, and the host lands. And I can navigate through all of that by listening and body movement. Um, so in a motion capture lab, talking about recording before and capturing, which is not really a nice term, but it's a, it's a, it's a method to record body movement. So I was learning that. And um, I, I use infrared markers to know well, different parts of the body movement, but I also use breathing sensors and electromyograms that are the ones who measure the tension of the muscles. So with all of that, uh, before they have done their migratory journeys without all this uh, technology, but then we recorded it the day after, and these are the migratory journeys and excerpt. en Colombia y se me hincha el cuerpo, se me hincha el estómago, se me hincha el cerebro, se me hincha el intestino, se me hincha el corazón, masa, peso, volumen. Tú le san fan de la patria, no. To the queen and save the queen and beyond. Me da mucho frío y comienzo como a temblar y como que intento respirar profundo para que mi cuerpo deje de temblar, pero no puedo dejar de temblar y tiemblo y tiemblo. Y es muy extraño, como que el cuerpo sigue andando sin que yo lo pueda controlar. Miedo, 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 miedo. La valencia. Siempre Laberinto. queriendo regresar al centro, regresar a mí, encontrar mi voz. Y me pierdo y me encuentro y me busco y me pierdo y me encuentro y me busco. La, 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 en un la, la, ciclo la, la, la. infinito. Laberinto. para que nunca se pierda siempre tiene que acordarse que a la derecha está Monserrate y si Monserrate está a su derecha el norte siempre va a estar hacia su frente y atrás el sur ok so they also listen to uh, the oral archives of the conflict and reacted 
that was a way for me to think how the system could work. Um, I will skip this. Um, and just to say that after I focus in all this amount of data and experiences, both emotional and scientific, um, I focus in movements that were interesting for me, walking and rotation, um, and also breathing. So these are just plots of the breathing data. And the breathing data, I mean, we are all breathing. I mean, hopefully we are all breathing. And uh, it doesn't have to, you don't have to perform. I work with people who are not necessarily performers or, or that want to do it, but just to listen. And, and that's the a presence. So I decided to work with breathing as part of the telepresence. I say, what if we sonify this breathing? Um, and with the walking, uh, walking to, sen to sense place and breathing to feel presence. And I developed uh, three modules of software, Memento, Respiro, and Transmission. Memento to navigate through oral archives, that was through text mining, I won't go into details now. Uh, Respiro, which is the sonification across distant locations. And Transmission, that was a mix of technologies to transmit that to online audiences. Um, this was the performance between Oslo, uh, Barcelona, and London, and I will just play a bit of it. Si yo doy un paso hacia adelante, la historia cambia. Si giro hacia la izquierda, él estaba solo. Cambio de mujer. Ves tú. Si giro a la derecha, yo no quiero ir. Ves tú. Cambio de no aspecto. Soy sí. extranjero. Sí, exactamente. Me mento find semantic relations between the oral archives and retrieves these by sensing people's steps and rotations. Respiro transmits breathing data across distant locations and converts data into sound. Transmission uses a variety of technologies to transmit voice and to create a mix with the sonification of breathing for online audiences. Okay, so they are not listening to each other's voices in their locations. They are listening to the breathing of others. What was, the only ones who listen to what is happening are the online audiences. And what was really incredible, fascinating, is that they, in the recording, suddenly they are laughing together in the three cities. So I found it fascinating as a way of communicating our embodiment in a way that is not this, that probably online audiences are seeing, this half body, uh, not through the voice, but through another thing. Um, so that's uh, also fascinating. And I analyze all what happened in the performance, and I propose that breathing becomes a bridge for emotional telepresence. So this is based in um, a taxonomy of movement developed by Alexander Jensenius um, and uh, goes through the different movements. And what I did was to map it with the, what happened in the performance, with the sounds and also with uh, the movements. So from all these movements, I have an article coming uh, in a chapter in this book uh, for, uh, in July, which I go in depth with the breathing, if you are interested. Um, but all of that, after that, my fellowship finished as uh, this morning or oh, this afternoon earlier, they, they were saying this needs lots to 
to digest um, the research grants don't have the time that you really need to digest all of that. So I am now independent uh, artist and a scholar, a freelance. And then I said, well, I need to demonstrate that. And I was in the process of trying to bring together in an app or something kind of accessible to people. And the lockdown came and the pandemic came. So suddenly everyone started to talk about breathing. And then suddenly everyone just needed to walk in a limited walk uh, around the house, including me. So I just started to walk and breathe <laughs> and reflect. And, and I start to map without too much um, scientific methods, let's say, but the mapping of the rhythm of my breathing with my walking. And I say, wow, I can do something in a very, in a more simple way that the three venues, nine breathing sensors, all of that that I couldn't have. So in which frequency are you vibrating today? That started to be a key question for the Intimal app. I'm a resident at the studio, a place that supports uh, small businesses um, in Bath, Bath Spa University, um, helping freelancers just to bring their ideas um, into fruition and, and to see how can we fund it, not necessarily through, through universities, uh, being a, in a university. Mm, so this is the app, and the proposal is that the body is the interface. So the idea is that you walk as if you were breathing. The steps act as play, playback and pause button. And you rotate also the body to change directions. And you are a turning dial. Um, it's for headphone listening. And the mobile is a sensor and as a transmission device. And it works in uh, most of people's mobiles. Um, I did this uh, work as a a test, UX test, with uh, Dr. Liliana Rodriguez, and Kieran Harte uh, is, is the programmer. So, yeah, so I go into frequencies. So I tested in Bath with 10 women. Uh, just after the lockdown was kind of easy, and so you could go out and stay more or less at the distance with other people. Mm. So I test telepresence, but also telecopresence. That means that you are in the same space, but you are connecting through the internet. Um, I, the, the test was also with these migratory journeys that I show you from the Intimal, from the voices of, of Colombian migrant women. Um, they were happy for me to test this with other women. Um, so I have some little excerpts of these stories and the frequencies, which were in a range that I consider safe for people. There was a fascination with frequencies. And these are some of the accounts. Just to see them uh, uh, fast, you can scan it. Uh, this week is going to be published an article about this work in the Honma Journal. Um, so you can go uh, more in detail. But yeah, it was really about a connection with inside, with the nervous system, but also an emotional connection with the frequencies. How the frequencies help them to be linked to the environment. Um, how they also, not only when they walk alone, but when they work with, walk with others. Um, is being in company with others, is being in, in, in relation with the environment. So there is listening to the self, listening to the environment, and listen to distant locations, which has been my dream with all these telematic performances, but in a much easier, <laughs> easier way and um, interesting. Um, OK. Mindful of rhythms moving with the rhythm of frequency, the rhythm of my body, and the rhythm of the environment. So here I would like just to bring Elaine Radig, the composer, because these frequencies are very mysterious, and she has worked quite a lot with these frequencies, Pauline Oliveros too. Um, but I just found this quote from Elaine Radig, 
um, about this type of sounds. They bring a different approach to listen, and it helps us to understand how we hear and what is awakening in us. And when we use headphones, we still have the perception of, uh, of, of the environment. So it creates really interesting effects in urban environments, in parks. Um, these were more the connections with the stories, directly with the stories. And here I have uh, the migratory journey with teleco presence in Bath. I do not have children, but 11 children sounds a lot. 11 children. Carter to the court. One, two. From the countryside to the city. I ask Carter. what is Boca Chico? Boca. And Boca Chico is a fish. when I tested the apps first, one of the things I actually quite like is when you tune your frequencies, you can basically go like the different ones and it, you know, amplifies together. And I was like, oh, that is really cool. I like the frequencies too. I feel like, well, you feel more connected mm -hmm. and the rhythms are really nice to walk to. Yeah. And uh, well, if you're not canceling the noise outside, lesson to listen to it with the wind and with the birds and everything. It makes you feel mindful. It does feel like there's something inside you that is like beating to the rhythm of those frequencies. Mm. sure how to use it so it was really helpful to hear sort of like your interpretation and sort of yeah like your response to one of the stories yeah so then be like oh I see I can do just that you know it doesn't have to be super complicated yeah it can make you feel self-conscious to hear your own voice mm -hmm. and knowing that someone else is hearing your voice yeah. at the same time uh, for me it was challenging mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I think it's uh, the stories in general they were great and they it's really nice, well, I don't know, nice, great to feel the vulnerability of other people mm -hmm. and other women. I mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Okay, so um, 
it, it was a, a long, but uh, I think it's important uh, to that is in their words. And I go back to my quest for agency. And I think this work is bringing us agency because the signal is the interface. So we are not listening necessarily to, but we are listening in between um, locations. And, and it's a link with the inner self, is that membrane that I was talking before, the sonic environment of place and others that are connected through the distance. Um, there is an articulation, the body movement creates articulation, our spoken vo voice uh, creates articulation, um, which is also needed for this joining of, of rhythms. And also it stimulates the merging of a voice. Many people not necessarily feel encouraged to speak in a microphone, but it's a more intimate listening. I do it in a small groups. Um, I recently uh, participated with this work uh, with eight improvisers in the Earth Day Art Model Telematic Festival. I didn't use stories, uh, pre-recorded stories, but I just um, use um, frequencies. And I ask them that when there is anything that is dreamlike and they want to share it, uh, they can share it. So I won't necessarily, I think I'm a, a bit, it kind of, okay, it's just one minute. Oops, because I think it's very nice. The sun is kissing my face like a soft breeze. I'm floating in a big tree in a cloud of resonant or children's voices. The sky. Tune in and out of our resonance. All around me. Protective. So, um, thanks for your listening. I have shared with you all this uh, journey of what I call sonic migrations from the sounding in the ground, this industrial shell, to remove it completely and try to work the body with agency, uh, particularly uh, working with technologies. Um, so, for me in this, in this work, uh, which is still the research and development, the Intimal app. I learn each time. I use it with a group of people. I learn more. Um, I want also to go further than directions because it's northwest, southeast, um, but also because it's not necessarily, and I have learned about migrations, it's not to go desperate to find another location but it's to become grounded where you are. And I think we need lots of work to become grounded so we can really give the steps that we meant to give with the circumstances that we are living and probably have to live. Um, but also not only that, it's also about expanding territories. So that is very important. That are not the territories that have been fixed by many uh, colonial and history and wars but is about giving a space to this imagination that artists we, we can have, and not only artists, human beings, um, so we can have. So yes, I propose these are the resonances that hold us as we walk through telematic rituals. It's very important to have rituals, 
to strengthen our individual and, and collective agency. It's something very special what happened, even if just three people share this space for 20 minutes is, is really, really special. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Simon. A wonderful presentation. Is there any question from the audience? Because online we haven't received any question yet, but then I'm going to take the first question, if that's OK. <laughs> um, yeah, um, let's go back a little bit to, the, to this uh, performance you showed between three cities. And I was not entirely sure. You, you mentioned that it was an improvisation uh, between um, migrant women. And I was not sure what you gave them in advance before those performances. So Sorry, I, I think I'm not listening to you in this feedback, so I'm going to approach okay. you a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I was uh, talking about uh, the performance between those three cities. Suelo fertil. Exactly. Yes. And uh, my question was that, it was an improvisation yes. between them. And then what else you gave them before the improvisation? Oh, what yes. material? Yeah. Yes, uh, that's a very, very good question. That was a one month process before the performance in deep listening. And the proposal was um, conversation. Conversation was the improvisation. So they have engaged in conversations about their dreams, about metaphors of uh, fertility, uh, how to make fertile soil where you are. Probably I go back to be grounded. So, okay, this is not my original soil, this is not my original land, but I'm here. What can I do here? And that gave lots of um, interesting connections between dreams, the soil, also listening to language, spoken language, to their native language, and also to their uh, second language, uh, some of them were just learning the new language in the place where they were. Some of them felt more confident with the foreign language than with the native language, etc. All these things that happen in migration. So when it came to the improvisation or the conversation, some of them brought things in what I play. Uh, one of them w was connected with whales which actually whales are also repetitive in, in my work. People in the underground also listen to whale song. And then she brought again the whale. Um, and it, uh, she actually used to live at that time in, in Chicago. And, um, and yeah, she was very interested about the idea of the sea. Well, they have the lake, the big lake, but also the, the big, big parts of, of water and connecting with, with the water to see what our uh, real ancestral, the oldest, oldest ancestors, which are the whales. This is what, what she brought. So she was trying to communicate what the whales somehow uh, communicate to her. This is how she's feeling as another being. Mm, lots of conversations about migration in these different projects, but in that one, was also the possibility that you have to reinvent yourself as a migrant. So you are detached from all the fixed identity that you had in the place where you come from. Uh, and then here you are, no one knows you. Um, and then you start to see new things. So, you, oh, you can, re you can even change your name. You can, okay, so, so in this reinvention of the self, you also can become a sponge. <laughs> you can become something else. Um, and I actually selected that also to be linked with this particular um, a panel. Uh, because yes, I think the connections are many, many connections of identity, but eventually the, the, the strongest identity comes with the land. Mm, yeah, there were so many conversations, but this one was probably the most um, appropriate for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with your with your answer, actually, you answered in the beginning when I introduced you. I, I told to the audience that we are coming back to the human, but actually, it also gives a nice answer to that. Why is it also still related to environment and then listening to the environment? Yeah, totally. So maybe someone like to have a question. Yeah.
I find your uh, talk uh, very impressive. I am a migrant too, and a Latin American, and I'm from Mexico. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. here you go. <laughs> we are connected. Uh, I find, I have a question like, how do you imagine that today the new generations that are so digital orientated, also with the pandemic internet, the connections have changed a lot. How can we um, see a new way for creating telematic rituals today? How can we, do you have any suggestions? Like yeah. what would you suggest for yeah. this ritualistic rescuing, these ritualistic mm. connections that the new generations are losing, I find? Yes, I think is um, going back, actually connecting with Jono and uh, David Abram, is to connect with the census. I, I mean, I, I teach deep listening and involve deep listening in, in everything, but also I teach, I have taught um, recently, uh, human-computer interaction with very young people. And I go through, actually, there is a popular science book called Sentient, and I went through all these animals, <laughs> and I asked students to become one of these animals. Um, with, there were some of kind of listening, there are others that perceive colors in a particular way. I was remembering the fish today, and it, it was not in the book, the fish. But, <laughs> but, um, but anything that brings them back to the body and to the mobility, because we know, because of the Industrial Revolution, like the sitting in the train and then the sitting in, this, in front of these machines and all what we experience and also if they ask us that we cannot go out. Um, so as much as possible to have hybrid um, work where they can explore the body because we, the body knows first <laughs> before the brain it can actually process it, and we are losing that. We are losing that, I mean, I have kind of a hand pain, so I have two mice, and um, yes, we are losing the connection. We need to connect first with ourselves, because if we, don't, if we don't connect with ourselves, we cannot connect with the rest. And we, this that connects us with the world disconnects us a lot with the self. Uh, I use it, I love it, but the connection needs to be made. And I think railway journeys <laughs> and the history of trains and industrial revolution has a lot to teach because there are so lots of parallels in the relationship with the body, with control, with agency that we can just remove and, and start alike. So anything to do with movement and perception and play, play because we are very scared it's important to, to relax, play, connect, and then we start. <laughs> Thank you. We also have a question from the online audience. Um, Tom is asking, uh, will the Intimal app be available? It looks wonderful. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I just need funding. <laughs> um, so Tom. just ad advertise. <laughs> um, yes. I, I received a startup funding from the Studio Recovery Fund, which was wonderful. But these things need lots of work. Not only that, but also that I work the app as an artist and not as a designer, although I had some um, uh, input from my colleague designer, Liliana Rodriguez, but it's a conversation. So what I'm doing now is I offer it for groups. It's a tool for workshops. It's a progressive web app. I don't want it to be in stores. I don't want Google Play, and I don't want Apple Store. These are gates, <laughs> gates that filter lots of freedom. So there is, it's a progressive web app. Um, it's available, I, it's kind of a space that I open. People go record, experience it, and then when the event has finished, like this room, I clear it. I clear ethics too, uh, and then it finished. Also, I don't accumulate a big database. Um, so, I mean, all this thinking, apart from other sonic and interface stuff that I want to improve, but it's improving bit by bit now. It has recording, and now it has transmission. Not fully synchronous, but it has transmission. Um, so, so if someone wants to experience it, it's just invite me to offer a workshop. 
with a group of people, and, uh, and they, they can experience at the moment. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. One last question, maybe, from the room. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, thank you for the talk and the project's really inspiring. Um, I was just thinking because of the topic of the day, <clears throat> if you could imagine some of this work with sensors and telematic co-presence could also connect humans and animals or plants or other beings on the planet. Is this something that you have been thinking about as a kind of experiential setting or is that ethically at all possible? I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think in terms of sensors, all is possible and there are artists doing lots of things, but I'm very, I'm a bit like the app. <laughs> I think of giving the next step. I think it's important um, because it's so full and we need to be careful with technologies. Technologies go extremely fast. Uh, data, places where data is being managed, also they go very fast. And we, I mean, let's say as a humble artist, we don't have too much access to so many things uh, to make it big. So sometimes I think, well, small is beautiful. <laughs> it's part of the economy, <laughs> the new economy. Small is beautiful and um, and yes, it's possible to experiment with different sensors. I have, of course, I'm part of the deep listening community and there are wonderful people, artists doing lots of um, music with plants, for example. Um, everything is about relationality. Uh, when, I, when I was studying with Pauline Oliveros, I said, Pauline, I went to the garden and I listened to a bee and she said, and she was li she was happy she was happy because she was listening to you while you were listening to her. So, so anyway, they are there. As this this afternoon, early afternoon, they were saying they are listening. I don't know if we need to colonize the whole space of their listening. I think we if we tune enough with ourselves, the. Um, that's a big step. And tuning is not that easy because we have lots of information and lots of bad habits. <laughs> um, so we need to relearn a lot. So at the moment, if I can get the walk properly working with the sensors that the mobile that is accessible to everyone, more or less to everyone, they have, I'll be pleased. And then I'll see the next step. Um, I see the next step. I'm open for collaborations, of course, but always without that the technology doesn't uh, impose their way. And it's very tricky because, because we, we are beings that get fascinated with these things. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think these were wonderful closing words. So thank you so much, Simona, <laughs> and also welcome. for the others for being part of the thank conversation you. and also online. Thank you so, so much. We have 20 minutes now for a little break, and then we will follow up with the next session. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.